Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. So, if you haven't played Duel Links, you're probably scratching your head about this one. Uh, despite a small stint of playability at the start of the app, in which Nachuria Beetle was the best monster you could be summoning, Nachuria have pretty much never been playable ever. That said, Nachuria were expected to be extremely dominant on release because of the card you see in front of you, Nachuria Bamboo Shoot. This card is Exterio as a tribute summonable monster, and in a format that had just gotten over Monarchs, this didn't seem that hard to get to. In fact, Nachuria has all the material to set up a bamboo shoot right out of the gate. Cherries is, of course, very good. A uh, Cliff is a great way uh, in order to keep monsters on your side of the field. Pumpkin lets you special a Nachuria from your hand. That said, in practice, it wasn't enough. It turns out a monster with 2,000 attack is a sitting duck for exactly Cyber Dragon, and pretty much every removal monster in the format as well. Bamboo Shoot was relegated to the boards of people trying to one-up their opponents for the next decade. Uh, and while it did see occasional play uh, from people who were coping, Nachuria as a strategy almost never did. The only breakout successes may be Cherries, which is featured in some plant synchro builds, uh, but as a result, these just did not really get anywhere at all. That said, a vast overrated archetype that was expected to be broken on release and then failed to meet any expectations is perfect for History of Jank. And there's a lot going for it. This is a deck that can synchro summons Nachuria Beast, Nachuria Barkeon, and even Nachuria Landoys, which you, if you haven't read, negates monster effects provided you've got spell cards in hand. As long as we can protect a bamboo shoot, we might have a fighting chance at this. So we're going to do so with uh, powerful spells like Shrink, powerful traps like Dimension Fusion, and yes, even Gaia Power. This card will enable our Bamboo Shoot to trade favorably with a Cyber Dragon and hopefully put a dent in its biggest counter. After that, we've got three Nachuria Butterfly. This allows you to negate opponent's attacks. Nachuria Cherries, which keeps material on field. Cliff does the same. Mantis destroys monsters your opponent normal summons. Pumpkin gives you an extra summon. Two Effect Veiler is pretty standard, as is a Book of Moon, a Dark Hole. Triple Gaia Power, a little less standard. One Heavy Storm, a Mind Con, a Monster Reborn, a Double Mystical Space Typhoon, Pot, Shrink, Bottomless, Dimensional Prison, Mirror Force, Solemn Judge, and Solemn Warning. In the extra, we've got a bunch of cards we can't summon, but some that we can. Nachuria Beast, of course, can be made with any four plus a tuner. We do, of course, some tuners in Nachuria Cherries, and it can be made with like a pumpkin, for instance. Nachuria Landois is a seven. Uh, Nachuria Barkeon is a six. And Nachuria Leo Drake is an embarrassment. Uh, you would think that a deck that's full of Floodgates' main boss monster would be a Floodgate, but no, it's a vanilla. We've also got three Scrap Archfiend in here. Now, this is a card that absolutely changed the math for a lot of synchro strategies. You see, during Edison format, there's not a really good seven-star generic. You've got Black Rose Dragon, but it's limited, and it's 2400 and doesn't trade favorably with pretty much anything. Um, you've got Ancient Fairy Dragon, which has a big butt, but can't really do too much. Scrap Archfiend hits extremely hard, very hard under Gaia Power, and is a great ladder for powerful eight-star synchros like Stardust Dragon and Thought Ruler. Finally, we are playing one Trishula. You can play it. Technically, you could make it. I don't think it'll come up, but if it does, it'll be very funny. All right, let's go to Simo and see what he's going to get floodgated out of the game with. You know, after watching Exodia last episode, who's going to want to watch boring, real Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, Scraps? Are you kidding me? Come on. Although, to be fair, Scraps are a very jank deck and have a very small blip on the radar of Yu-Gi-Oh! history, uh, both competitively as well as locally, because for the most part, this deck didn't really just ascend to top-tier status, but it did quite all right. It did actually manage to top a few large tournaments, but it wasn't just dominating like you ex expect most decks to at this time. 
time, but for reasons we'll probably be able to showcase in this episode. We get to see some neat cards, though, that actually do withstand the test of time, and some neat interactions from some other cards we've already known and loved up till now. So, introducing Scraps. This is one of the first archetypes that I would say that really revolves around destroying your own cards to generate advantage, and so I think it's cool that we get to see sort of the origins of this type of playstyle. Let's go ahead and do that card by card. So we've got two Valor, we have two Mechlord Emperor Grenell. This is one of the weirdest cards I've ever seen. It can't be normal summoner set. It has to be special summoned when a face-up monster you control is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, except during the damage step, which to be fair, we're playing Scrap, that isn't too difficult. Then you can special summon this card from your hand, and once per turn, you can target a synchro monster your opponent controls, equip that target to this card. This could be relevant, but with Joseph playing Naturia, probably not, but it's just funny that you get to like relinquish an opponent's synchro monster. That's kind of cool. This card gains attack and defense equal to half your life points and attack equal to the combined attack of the monsters equipped to it by this effect. You can target one of these equipped monsters, special summon that target to your field in defense position. So what's neat is that we're able to just special summon this out whenever we use any of our scrap effects, assuming it wouldn't miss timing because it is a when you can effect. So do be mindful of that. But if you have a high life total, this thing can come out at like 4,000 attack, even without equipping something, which is kind of crazy. We have three Tengu. You know Tengu from history of Yu-Gi-Oh. This card is just insane, always replacing itself. And because we can pop our own cards, Tengu is the perfect vessel for this. We have Sangen, and then we have the Scrap. So first up, we have Scrap Beast. This, if it's in face-up defense position and targeted for an attack, at the end of the battle phase, destroy this card. Keep in mind that it has to survive battle in order for that to work. And if this card is destroyed by the effect of a Scrap card and sent to the grave, you can target a Scrap monster in your graveyard except Beast, add that target it to your hand. So when you read some of these effects, they actually have some nice recycling capabilities, but they're just very awkward in the ways that you're actually able to uh, fulfill those conditions. Scrap Chimera is actually probably one of the better cards in the deck, just because this card even sees play in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! in really fringe off the wall, like FTK decks, just because of the fact that you're able to on normal summon target a Scrap tune in your grave and special summon it. We have two Scrap Goblin, which similar to the Scrap Beast is a level three tuner instead of it being level four and has the ability that if it's in face-up defense and targeted as an attack target, it's destroyed at the end of the battle phase. However, the difference is this can't be destroyed by battle, which means it will survive and trigger its effect, which when it does, it'll destroy itself and you can target a scrap monster in your graveyard except goblin, add it to the hand. We have scrap golem, which a lot of you may remember from Orcus. This card allows you to once per turn special summon a level four lower scrap from your graveyard. We have a scrap orthros, which is neat because you can just special summon it immediately. It's a tuner and you can target a scrap monster you control, destroy that target. And if this card is destroyed by the effect of a scrap and sent to the grave. You can target a scrap monster in your graveyard except Orthros and add that card to your hand. So there's a lot of ways to get these cards just continuously recycling. They're just very awkward. And so then rounding out the deck, we have Summoner Monk as well. This is just basically a one card level eight synchro. For the spells, Book of Moon, Dark Hole, True Nade, Mind Control, Monster Reborn, Double MST, Double Duality. Scapegoat is an interesting inclusion. It's funny though, because you can sync with the tokens. You can also pop the tokens for something like Scrap Dragon's effect. So that could come up. We have three Scrap Storm, which is actually a pretty neat card. You target a scrap monster you control, send a scrap monster from your deck to the graveyard, then draw a card, then destroy that monster. So a lot's happening here, but what's neat is you can actually dodge some sort of effect negation effects like effect failure, because then the monster would no longer be on the field while also having ways to trigger some of your scrap effects as well and actually drawing cards off of it too. We have three scrap yard, which is straight up adds a scrap tuner from deck to hand, which is actually quite a few monsters that we're playing. And then the traps are called the haunted two Phoenix chain, two decree, a solemn judgment and two solemn warning. The extra decks comprised of most of the usual offenders, we are able to play Beast and Barkeon just because most of the scrap cards are Earth, so that's cool that we get to take advantage of these. We also have Scrap Archfiend, which is just a giant level 7 synchro for all intents and purposes. Scrap Dragon is the name of the game when it comes to scraps. People play this regardless just because it has a strong effect, but the funny thing is that Scrap Dragon has a second effect, in case you didn't know. The second effect says, when this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the grave, target a non-synchro scrap monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. This means that you're able to just get back a monster onto your field and just keep the loop going. We have two Scrap Twin Dragon, which in all fairness probably never comes up, but it's kind of crazy. Once per turn, you can target one card you control and two cards your opponent controls. Destroy the one you control, and if you do, return the ones your opponent controls to the hand. That would obviously trigger one of your scrap effects as well. And then if this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card, target a non-scrap synchro and special summon it. So it has the same clause as Scrap Dragon. And then wrapping up the monsters, of course, we have Stardust and Thought Ruler Archfiend. The side deck, we have Triple Puppet Plant, a Closed Forest, no one have crossed out two Chain Disappearance, two Dust Tornado, two Goes and Match, a Light Imprisoning Mirror, Mask of Restrict, Royal Oppression, and Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. This deck, actually, I believe top 32 or top 16, one of the first SJ 
HJCs where scraps were actually playable. And I believe at the time of the feature article being written for this deck, this deck was five and oh. So I, clearly this deck has some legs and I'm curious to see how well this is gonna hold up to a deck like Naturia of all things. So we'll have to see. I'm curious to see how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. So uh, we can just stop the series now after last episode, right? I oh, think that was probably a peak you <laughs> Of course. Oh, you finally win one after 14 weeks. Shut down the episode. Uh, you know what? I'm actually, yep. I'm not, we're not keeping score. Uh, I think we're tied. And uh, that's the end of it. And uh, oh, God. yeah, my, with uh, my protagonist powers, I have the ability to end it. You know, I got to so, tell you, I moment. just, um, I, I knew that the fix was in the moment that I saw that I was playing against you on Exodia. I might as well be playing against Yugi on the God cards. That Kaiba was your idea, eyes. mind you, sir. Yeah, it was yeah, your yeah. idea. I so flew I don't a little too close it. to the sun. We all have had our hubris. Uh, indeed. Yes, uh, we have. And sadly, now we go back to playing uh, real decks. Well, I don't even know if you can call these real decks. I guess <laughs> really? one of these decks has actually topped something. Uh, your deck, on the other hand, <laughs> not exactly the most interactive strategy. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of strange. Um, both of these archetypes were expected to be really good when they were first released. Uh, I mean, Naturia has 18 floodgates. How could it possibly be bad? <laughs> Uh, and Scrap is a big, silly combo deck. Uh, quick, don't count the stars on the fridge. Uh, but, no. you know, um, one of them did have a couple of tops. That's Scrap. Naturia never did anything past the local level, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't annoying to play against. And we'll see if we get to validate that today, right now, on History of Jank. So I'll shout out the patron. It is Truna Morish. Thank you for the support. Buddy, got the hands up, rolling the die. What are we doing? Uh, yeah, I got it. I'm going to go odd. It is even. Uh, because Nurturia Ooh. Pumpkin lets you summon two monsters. That's the whole reason. Interesting. I was going to go odd for the number of monsters you need to tribute for Nurturia Bamboo Shoot. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll go first, you know? Oh, no. You get to go first with the Floodgate deck. Oh, geez. Well, you know. Shocker uh, there. I think you're fine because uh, this deck doesn't do anything going first. Excellent. Oh, maybe it actually does. Oh, God. Well, I guess I have the turn one FTK. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Mantis. Set a card and okay. pass. I've never read this card in my life. This card's fucking crazy. Why do people say this archetype sucks? Maybe this best of three will f will figure it out. I suppose so. All right, main one. Well, I, it's funny because like under normal circumstances, this would be good, but I guess I'm playing scrap and uh, that kind of just plays into what I want to do. It's, uh, you know, it, it, some of them do. Uh, many of the scrap cards have to be sent specifically by the effect of a scrap monster. So that's true. Hedging against true. that, I think. Uh, Let's duality. Sure. See what we find off the top. Oh, here. oh that's also another card that doesn't care about getting destroyed. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, sure. Let's get that one. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know. Uh, it sucks because unfortunately, uh, I can't do it this turn. But that's perfectly fine. Uh, or you could. <laughs> this should be back in the deck. I accidentally added that to my hand. I will set a card. J Joseph, trust me when I say it could be literally anything. No, literally, I will also set a back row. Right. And I'll pass it to you. Uh, stand by me. All good. Watch this. Naturia Bamboo Shoot! <laughs> okay, so go ahead and enlighten the audience as to this card. All right, so when this card came out, everyone thought that it was going to absolutely dominate the meta, and they were right. Yep. We all played Naturia for 400 years straight. To this day, every deck is either Bamboo Shoot, shoot FTK, or Pass. Uh, no, uh, this card was awful. Uh, <laughs> people thought that it was going to be broken because it does read your opponent can activate spell trap cards, and there are ways that you can set up uh, Naturia tributes, things like cherries or pineapple, uh, but in practice, it turns out a monster that just dies to Cyber Dragon is a really bad floodgate. So uh, I guess yeah. we'll just see what's going on here. There's also like niche interactions in like formats where people have tried to side deck this card against certain decks, and it's just it's just awful. Yeah. It just it doesn't work. Uh, shocker! It is Reborn Tengu. What? Who would have thought? Uh, 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 no, I don't believe you. <laughs> All right, we'll bring out another one. Yeah, unfortunately, you can still do monster effects under this, which you may have noticed are more important than the other ones. So we'll just pass turn. Okay, uh, I got nothing else, so I will draw here. Uh, that would have been excellent a turn ago. Well, I suppose I'll play the first actual scrap card of this episode, and that is Scrap Goblin. Okay. I will sink Tengu and Goblin. Wow. Sinking with Tengu. Has anyone tried that before? I Right? It seems like people should actually start from around this time. I guess I'll just keep on theme here, and we will make uh, the biggest idiot in our extra deck, Scrap Archfiend, <laughs> and uh, trigger Tengu. Sure. 
You know, you wouldn't expect uh, it, but Scrap Archfiend has a huge impact on this format. Just being a 2700 vanilla is not bad. Uh, we'll try to get in here. I imagine this is not happening. Right. Uh, damage step. Uh, I have shrink. Okay, sure. So I'm going to take... I go down to 1350 to your 2000, so 650. Okay, Scrap Archfiend falls, and that's it from me. All right, stand by main. I didn't think I'd get this far. Uh, I'm just going to normal summon Mantis. Sure. Uh, we'll go to combat. I'll try and get in here. Three, I believe I'm out of Tengu's. Yep, 17. All right, second main, I'm going to set one. Back to you. Okay, I will draw. This is going well. I will set one and throw it to you. Oh my God, there's no way. Uh, I'm going to mind control your set card. You can take my effect veiler. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Uh, I will flip some of the some effect options. veilers. I'm going to normal cliff here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to sink the cliff and the veiler for a cataster. Unfortunately, your tuner is not a an earth monster, so I cannot make a beast. Weird. Uh, and now cliff, uh, it triggers, right? Right? It went from the field to the graveyard, right? That's just going to have to be enough. Now, this deck is actually playing a couple of really insane cards, specifically to beat the fact that it can't possibly get over a monarch. And that includes Gaia Power. Uh, I am on Gaia oh. Power. So okay. we're going to try and get in. This is 22, 25, and 22. Is this lethal? It is. Dark Hole, Double Scrapyard, Fiendish Chain, Wait, and Bimbo one other Shoot card actually I actually won! Remember. Unbelievable! Yeah, we were kind of giving Bamboo Shoots some shit, but when my hand is all spells and traps and, like, two monsters, you know, I, I really don't have much to say. That was that was impressive. This, Congratulations. This episode's going to be a blast to edit. Ten minutes of us saying Bamboo Shoots the worst card in the history of time, followed by it completely doming you. Uh, You know, I, I sort of did it to myself. I could have scrapyarded preemptively, but I wanted to, like, wait to know what I was going to search and not just blindly do it, but I guess that was my mistake, right? All right, good luck, buddy. Uh, I've got duality like I did last time. Let's mm -hmm. see what we get. We can see the best card in our deck, the Mech Lord Emperor. Don't even know if I want that. This hand is so garbage. Holy crap. Well, that's ideal, right? Because they're scraps. Thank you. I got to be honest with you. I think maybe adding duality off the duality is the play. <laughs> like, my hand is not good. <laughs> One of those games, is it? Uh, yeah. Like, the Emperor's also fine... But no, I, I honestly think I go for duality again. That's just, it's not great. All right, so we'll put these back. We'll see if I regret this. Uh, Orthros would have been crazy if my hand was actually playable. Uh, instead, I will be going set three pass. Go ahead. All right, my hand sucks too. Uh, we'll go one, uh, two, and three. Okay, decree. Ah, no! <laughs> Why would you put you didn't see one trap you for me? You flat-gated me the first game. I don't want to hear monster. it. Monster. <laughs> oh my god. Uh that's a pretty good draw, but I think we could probably do better. We'll duality again. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the boy. That's what we wanted to see. Oh Give me him. God. Give me that Tengu. Uh I don't fear your back row. If it's shrink, oh, I mean I don't be my fear guess. Your back row. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah, I bet you are. I don't know. Uh, go ahead. Okay. This is going well. Main one. I will guess run out Sangen. Sure. I'm like not even playing scraps at this point. Yeah. Awesome scrap <laughs> deck, buddy. Right? I think it's pretty cool. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to normal pumpkin. Okay. Gaia power. That's a big pumpkin. Okay. A big old boy. I'll go to combat. Attack the Tengu. Sure. Uh, so I take two. Yes. Trigger Tengu. Yeah, yeah. Get another Tengu. Eventually. There we go. Second main. I'll set one. Back to you. Okay. Uh, well, the nice thing is that pumpkin is pretty good for you. Uh, anything standby? No. Scrapyard. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and add Scrap Beast. Yeah. I will run out the Scrap Beast. Sure. I will sink Tengu and Scrap Beast for Scrap Dragon, and I will trigger Tengu. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll get our final Tengu. Uh, then on open game state, I'll book the Scrap Dragon. Booking Scrap Dragon. That is annoying. So fine, get set. I guess I will turn Sangan sideways 
and throw it to you. I'm gonna normal Mantis here. Blumpkin into the set card. Which you can kill because it is Earth and Gaia Power drains its defense by 400. That is quite funny, actually. Then Scrap Dragon, second effect. I can't believe this card has another effect. It's so annoying. It has another effect that never comes up because no one ever plays Scraps. I get to resummon the Scrap Beast and I guess I'll put it in defense. You can kill it with your Mantis, sadly. So it doesn't really matter what position it's in. Uh, I guess eh, it'll destroy itself anyway, but it'll destroy it from its own effect if it's in defense. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, sure, I'll do that. And then I don't think it matters because I don't have anything in the grave. So he's gone. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do from this position. Chill. Yeah, go ahead. It's pretty good for you because Mantis can just snipe any normal summon. So if I try to like make another play, that actually works pretty well for you. Okay, let's go ahead and run out Scrap Chimera. As turn player, I get to use Scrap Chimera to target a Scrap Tuner Engrave and Special Summon it. So I will target Scrap Beast. Um, Are you going to snipe this with your Mantis? No, that's, that's fine. Okay, so Beast comes back. He's not a tuner. Oh, well, in that case, I will just Veiler him. Okay. I thought uh, this card fine. was good. People play him today. <laughs> So Scrap Chimera 1 targeting Beast, Valor 2 targeting Scrap Chimera. I will Chain Link 3 Scrap Storm targeting okay. Chimera. Okay, so Scrap Storm resolves. I have to send a Scrap from deck to grave and then I get to draw a card. I don't know if there's anything particular. There's one card I really want to get rid of, but uh, you can guess where that card is. I guess I'll just dump a Scrap Goblin. Why not? Uh, and then Scrap Chimera will get destroyed. Oh, I get to draw a card, then Chimera gets destroyed. Uh, Valor now won't negate Chimera because it's no longer on the field. And then Chimera's effect, I get to bring out Scrap Beast. And I think I'll put it in attack, although I don't know if I care all that much. Well, we got a tuner on the field. That was mainly what I was aiming to do. So let's go ahead and sink the Beast and the Tengu. Uh, we're gonna get dragon uh no effect this time because i am out of tengus i will use scrap dragon i will target my back left decree that i keep showing to you and let's get rid of your gaia power if i declare an attack into pumpkin we would crash unless you have double shrink but even if we crash i still get something back so i think that's actually fine uh yeah i'll i'll try to hit here um yeah, that's okay. I'll take 14. Pumpkin down. Uh, second main. I don't think I got much else, so I'll throw it back. All right, stand by me. All right, I'm going to Monster Reborn targeting your Scrap Dragon. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, we will trigger Scrap Dragon. Uh, I'm going to pop my Bottomless Trap Hole and... Excuse me, sir. Target. I may have something. Oh, I really... I mean, I really want to target the Royal Decree, but I'm going to go for the Scrap Dragon here. Scrap Dragon into Scrap. One in hand. I guess I'll Veiler this. Sure. You didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. I'll just go to combat. I'm going to crash the Scrap Dragons in. What you got in damage step? Nothing. Okay. Uh, That's fine. Sure. Now, unfortunately, I only get one trigger of scrap because I have to have it in my own possession, yep. which is frustrating. I will bring back, well, I can only bring back a tuner. So I can bring back the goblin or I can bring back the beast. Either of which your mantis can just kill. I'll just go for scrap goblin. In kill. defense position. Yeah, because it can't be killed by battle. Kill. Okay, so I take nothing. All right, go ahead. All right, so end phase or end of battle phase, this gets destroyed. Yep. And then I get to take a scrap from my grave, except goblin and put it back in my hand. So I guess we go chimera. Yeah, it's any monster. Sure. All right, Sangan doing work. I'll draw. Uh, okay, chimera. Oh, well, Mantis. Had a monster. Fuck. Okay, well, I still get the monster, thankfully. Uh, we'll get goblin. I'll sink Sangan and Goblin for Brio. Trigger Sangan. Yeah, you got it. Royal Decree. I have like five traps in my deck, dog. I drew three Buddy, of them. 
that the bamboo shoots on the other foot now. You know, you're complaining about floodgates. Hilarious, but I, 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 I am. I truly awful. am. All right, let's draw for turn. All right, see what you got. Ooh, yeah. Not much. I'll tell you that. Not much. Uh, go ahead. I think somehow this hand's worse than the hand I had before. Uh, main one. I will cry. I will set three cards. Throw it to you. All right. Uh, no gods, no masters. Cliff for shoot. Yep. All right. Didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> Woo! Back 2K. to Yu-Gi-Oh. We'll draw. Oh, perfect. Right on fucking time. God, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Go. Stand by me. Uh, we'll go Mantis. That's got to be an FDK. Yep. And back to you. Yeah! <laughs> One minute, 30 second game. New I record. mean, I should have flipped the decree. Like, I was just raging at that point. Spell, spell. Drew the warning after you summon shoots, by the way. Scrapyard, scrap fucking golem. Yes! Even in 2011, this card is still glued to your hand as a fucking one of. I thought I was done with that with I'm Orcus. Going back nope, to the it's past. even worse. Joseph has to win this episode. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god that was fucking miserable i just looked at my hand and i'm like if he has shoots i'm dead like there's no way around it and here we are well that was fun and interactive wasn't it that was a great time it's unfortunate um you know, I think you got to show off in game two a little bit of what made Scrap so powerful, which is Scrap Dragon's a really good card, and it's really good in the deck design to make it. Uh, and they form this really interesting resource loop that does get you advantage every single turn. Um, yeah. And I got to show off my deck, which is a huge <laughs> asshole that lives and dies off the back of Bamboo Shoot not getting Cyber yep. Dragoned. It was quite funny. I was side decking the one of Mask of Restrict just uh, so you couldn't Bamboo Shoot Might as well, you know. <laughs> I so might hard. as well right if it's a card that stops you from going to this nonce i had a game too but you just never had a chance to tribute summon so it didn't matter and i decree up on top of it but uh yeah no i mean it's neat to see scrap dragon actually using its second effect which never comes up aside from like this actual format right because most of the time scrap dragon is just a good generic eight that any deck wants to play anyway but when you play it natively in the archetype it's meant to be played in, it's even better because it actually replaces itself when it dies. And you just get back Chimera. Chimera, if you have a tuner, you just make Scrap Dragon again. That's the resource loop that you were alluding to. Fantastic. Like, it's pretty cool to see. I know I am by far, a, a, like, not even close to being able to pilot Scrap proficiently. And I'm sure I missed many opportunities to activate this little card here uh, in our last game, which was in my hand. But it's also a when you can effect. So I feel like it missed the timing like 90 times and I wasn't actually <laughs> able to do it. But. In all fairness, like, the fact that you have all Tengu to supplement the strategy as well is just insane. Like, Tengu is already good in any deck, right? But then the fact you pair it with any scrap card that's popping things, like Dragon, and then you get to pop one of your opponent's cards and get another Tengu. We've seen Tengu abuse, like, 900 different ways in history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is just one of the ways you can actually abuse it in Jank that uh, really not many decks can take full advantage of, and so it's cool to see that interaction as well. For sure. Um, it's unfortunate. I mean, uh... Reborn Tengu is going to be a power player in History of Jank for a while. Really enabled a bunch of really bad decks to do decent stuff. Yep. Um, and really I wish bad. we would have seen more of that decent stuff. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I didn't get to show yep. off uh, my epic cards. I have Landoys in here. You know, I got Beast. I got Why Barkeon. do you need it? Yeah, but why, why do you need it? it? Why do you need it? Bamboo Shoots wins you the game. Bamboo <laughs> Shoot is just Beast and Barkeon in one card. Like, why even play a extra deck? You don't need it. Uh, I also have the best uh, Naturia Synchro, which is their ultimate boss monster. More stars than anything else. I'm talking, of course, about the vanilla. Excellent. A really good card. Excellent. Really good. I love how this is also not generic. How you specifically need, like, the earth requirements to make this We don't well. want anyone to have this effect. I mean, that's just too strong. This is what, level nine level on top nine. of it? <laughs> so awkward. So you could go what into Trish, but this guy has 100 more than Trish, so he's better. 300 more than Trish. Trish is 27. Ooh. Yeah. And you only need two monsters to make it. You don't need three like Trish. Yeah, I you, mean, could, you could make it with two fives, you know? Like, what the fuck were they thinking? They make Beast, Barkeon, and Lando. Like, that should have just been, like, exterior in a synchro, but that might have been too good. Yeah, I don't probably. know. Like, that just seems so strange from a design choice but whatever it is what it is uh you know speaking oh, of things buddy. that are strange from a design choice you know we've got we've got bamboo shoots and yeah and uh we got me going back in the jank tank as well sadly it was, uh, fun, it was fun for one episode yeah. but you know i guess i wasn't playing exodia and scrap is nowhere near as powerful as that deck not so something i would have expected is. to hear i'm gonna be honest with you
So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for another episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So big shout to Shout1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim00X3, Chaotic Meatball, MBT Play, Medulce, Eka, Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Draconic, Rock Slide, Jordan Coons, Iron Blades, and Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Lou, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Phoenix the Immortal, Cody Brett, John Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, TC Gaming, Thanks for the Sleeves, Dad, Matthew Brady, Max. MBT's Gamer Word Pass, Tom Russell, Twinkle Muncher, Why Read Cards When You Can Just Click Buttons, Valen Jackson, Orange You Glad I Didn't Say, Alpha Tribute Ben 10, Helios 515, Thank You, Simo, MBT Gage, The RJB Zero, and Ruxin 34, MBT Fans Scare Me More Than COVID, Simping for Simo, Stolfin Amethyst, Tyler H, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, Mike Ty, Rev Skinner, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Stella and Zoe Vermillion, Wonder Waffle, Skull Servant, and The Wandering Doomed Are Boyfriends, MBT MBT canceled by all communities soon, canceled by all committees soon, canceled by all players soon. Not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it. The Undertaker versus Simo and MBT, Hunter Reed and Shrugs. Thank you so much for watching the video and we will see you next time.